military hardware required by our defence forces represents an investment which involves every Australian citizen. Whether we taxpayers receive value for our money depends on the effectiveness of what is virtually the army equivalent of a consumer protection organisation. The Army Design Establishment is charged with the responsibility of developing the standards for every piece of equipment supplied to the various branches of the service to satisfy their need for performance and quality. The existence of this organisation ensures that when it buys anything, the Army will receive the greatest value for the money it spends. The Trials and Proving Wing of the Army Design Establishment is located at Monagita, north of Melbourne, where all new or modified mobile equipment is put through its paces. From an observation building, the entire area can be observed, and currently the testing program includes the pilot models of a new type of general purpose one-ton truck. The evolution of this vehicle commenced three years previously when the design establishment built an experimental machine before inviting tenders from the Australian automotive industry for the manufacture of pilot models. The new vehicle has been planned to include the highest possible content of Australian made components. The vehicle has a high cross-country mobility with a carrying capacity of one tonne. The proving ground has been planned to include every possible type of condition and hazard likely to be encountered by an army truck. This part of the course has been designed to simulate artificially a very rocky road. Specially designed potholes severely test suspension. The herringbone pattern of this section would soon expose defects of design. Adequate articulation of the wheels and their suspension is required for this test. The manufacturer's representative suffers almost as much stress as his trucks. Now through the water hazards, both shallow and deep. The determination of performance over sandy terrain is also part of the acceptance tests, which include dynamometer measurements. These reveal the amount of power which can be delivered to the driving wheels under a wide range of conditions. The fully loaded vehicle must be capable of climbing steep slopes. Here's a very stringent test. A fully loaded climb of a 1 in 1.61 incline, stopping on the slope and taking off again to negotiate the course. Finally, through a set of gauges to determine whether the truck can negotiate Australian roads, pass under bridges, fit into transport aircraft, or pass through tunnels when transported by rail. And with its survival of all these tests, the Australian Army's new one-tonner could go into production. It would be a vehicle designed to suit Australian conditions in a wide variety of applications, including easy modification to perform as an ambulance or as a machinery, radio or recovery vehicle. In the ammunition laboratory at the Army's artillery range, situated at Port Wakefield, South Australia, Technicians prepare ammunition for proof. Guns fitted with new barrels ensure that the performance of the propellant charge and the shell can be measured with extreme accuracy. Special VHF radio permits accurate measurement of the shell trajectory. Before the firing, an army boat clears the firing range and the impact area. A radio sonde balloon is released to determine wind speed, wind direction and air temperature. The information from the balloon is automatically recorded and passed to the control centre. 
By such means, this and other establishments maintain a close check on the quality and performance of all the ammunition required for the wide variety of weapons with which the Australian Army is equipped. The ballistic results of the firing are computed. In New South Wales, in a building designed specifically for the purpose, cargo carrying parachutes are inspected before being put into service. The Army's Red Beret men, the special parachute troops, are responsible for the care and folding of their own parachutes. But the men have the assurance and protection of a system of inspection which ensures that each parachute will have met stringent tests before it was put into service. This is one of the more dramatic situations in which the importance of a strict system of control and inspection which covers every item of equipment used by the Army can be fully appreciated. One of the Army's biggest responsibilities is that of the repair and maintenance of the wide variety of equipment it uses. Here at Bandiana in northeastern Victoria, the Royal Corps of Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers has established its training centre. The armament wing trains soldiers in basic turning and fitting as a prelude to specialisation in one of the more than 20 types of courses. The men become qualified to service and repair small arms at the training centre where a comprehensive training aid collection of small arms is maintained. The repair of anti-aircraft guns and field artillery becomes the specialisation of others who have completed their basic engineering course at the centre. Automotive electrics are an important specialisation for some trainees. The many applications of radio and radar require soldiers who are trained to maintain and service a wide variety of electronic equipment. Here too are trained the Army's automotive technicians. Many types of engines can be studied while in operation in the engine room. A special section is devoted to the diesel engine and its injection system. The recovery of vehicles and equipment has always been an important function of the Corps of Royal Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. Shallow water diving trains men in the mechanics of underwater recovery. This is one of several specialist courses covering every aspect of the recovery of mobile equipment wherever it may have broken down or become damaged. This training program at Bandiana is part of an overall program which plans to provide every member of the Australian Regular Army with some particular trade skill. Some unusual and highly specialised equipment is used in the important work of recovery. When it's become fully trained, the soldier artisan is qualified to service and repair the wide variety of machinery and equipment used throughout the service. In these workshops, the Centurion tank may be completely stripped down and rebuilt as many as three times during the period of its useful life. Armoured personnel carriers are overhauled and also modified in these well-equipped army workshops at Bandiana. By these means, the most efficient service and performance can be obtained from each costly piece of machinery. The carefully controlled system of design, proving and maintenance of the equipment our army requires to carry out its defence role covers every one of thousands of different items. In the procurement of each item of equipment, the system ensures that our army receives the best possible value for every dollar it spends on our behalf.